As a clinical psychologist, it baffles me that as the most intelligent species, we sometimes find it hard to learn from our mistakes, especially when it comes to love. Just respect people. I don't have to respect you, Alex. We're not together. I want to help them break free. Oh, sorry. Rip that little puppy up. In this experiment, I'm going to help people escape the cycle of damaging relationships where they make the same mistakes over and over again. I don't feel as pretty as them. I give too much of myself away too quickly. I'm going to confront them by bringing them face to face with their ex-lovers, friends and family to reveal some harsh truths. Do you think the way you looked was important to him? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Too much? Yes. I think this might change their lives. I did make it all about me. Will it work? You heard what Dan says, you know it, but do you believe it? Just like the people coming to see me, I'm willing to give it a try. I'm Lyndall. I'm 28 and I'm a stay-at-home mum. I'm a bit wild. I'm usually the person that is making a fool of themselves to make people laugh. I've got a pattern where I am with someone and it's quite intense and then after the four month mark, I start to get bored and by the five month mark, I'm out. I'm very nervous about meeting the psychologist, but at the same time excited because I'd love to know what they're gonna say that hopefully I can take away and use. Today I'm meeting with Lyndall. She's got an unrealistic expectation of what a relationship looks like. I'm finding that young millennials today are so heavily influenced by social media and dating apps that early start of a relationship, they get that high, that euphoric feeling of well-being. The problem is that when the relationship settles, they're so unlikely to put in work at the back end. Hi, Lyndall. Hi. I'm Cliff. Lyndall. How are you going? Good. Come on a seat. What I'm hoping is that I can teach Lyndall to reframe what a relationship looks like and then for her to be brave enough to go after what she wants. What exactly are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking to have longer relationships so that my daughter has healthy role model in what relationships should actually look like. I don't want this revolving door of men coming in and out of her life. Um, I don't want her to think that that's a healthy pattern. All right, before we get to the nitty gritty, Lyndall, we've got a few people coming in to give us a different perspective of what might be going on externally with information that could help you break free of that pattern. How does that make you feel? Uh, nervous. I was worried about who, who it was gonna be and what they were gonna say. Tell me a bit about Lyndall. I'm really loud, boisterous. I'm always doing crazy things, skydiving, abseiling, whitewater rafting, anything that keeps the heart You're a going. Thrill seeker. Yeah, definitely. Crazy. <laughs> My friends would describe me as crazy, definitely. I'm always doing pretty silly stuff. So, can you tell me a little bit about your relationships? So, there's probably been about 13 since high school. Could you talk me through a few of them that stand out? The first one that stands out was when I was 17, 18. That's the one that I bring everything back to. Was it a relationship that you didn't get bored of? Yeah, so it was a relationship that I didn't get bored of, but we were very young, and so we would break up, get back together, break up. Following him was Steve. I was with him the longest, about a year and a half. He made it past the five month mark. He did, he right. did. Uh, Steve was very exciting, very fun, but he was controlling. He would tell me that I couldn't go do things with him. He's telling you what you can and can't do. What made you stay around for so long? He was fun. <laughs> I made the promise to myself that I will never, ever be in a relationship like that again. I will never let anyone make me believe that I'm less than what I am. 
So that's probably why I go for the more submissive guys, because they're easier for me. So Steve ended. Yeah. Any other significant ones after that? There's been a lot of nice people, but there wasn't much substance. That's how I feel about most of the nice guys that I've dated. They're really kind and loyal, and that's what most people are looking for. But then there's not much else. They don't captivate you. Yeah. The type of guys that I go for tell me yes a lot. They think that by just doing everything or not disagreeing with me, that that's going to keep me happier. But it does the opposite. Tell me about your daughter's dad. Aaron is one of those nice people. He does everything and anything for myself and my daughter. But yeah, again, not much substance. OK. What happened? I fell pregnant with my daughter. So you stayed together? I tried to make it work for the baby, but then I was like, well, I'd much rather her have two happy homes and not one unhappy home. Were you just bored? Yeah. I couldn't deal with uh, him being so submissive. So I'm getting a really clear picture of what's going on. Yeah. You mentioned you crave excitement in a relationship, but you also don't want to be with someone who's controlling. Yeah. I need someone who's not completely submissive, but who's not going to have that power and control. And where do I find that in the middle? So, Lyndall, you've told me a lot about your situation from your perspective. Why don't we hear it from somebody who's been on the receiving end? I was a bit dubious about who it would be, but also about what they would say. Josh and Lyndall's relationship didn't outlast the honeymoon phase. Josh attributed this to Lyndall's fear of missing out and the work required to continue the relationship. When we first meet in a relationship, we're overcome with an endorphin high. We're so open and fresh with our feelings. But after five to six months, the excitement fades and the hard work sets in. Josh couldn't fly into state today, so he sent us a video message for Lyndall. <laughs> Lyndall and I dated for probably a period of a few months, maybe four, five at the most. Josh is a really lovely person, but he was just boring me, yeah. Lyndall does get caught up, I suppose, in the honeymoon phase of a relationship. Obviously, you know, first six months are always pretty exciting because it's a new thing. So there's always going to be a time where after the honeymoon periods, a relationship will sort of settle. I wonder whether she has this fear of missing out. I do wish her the best of luck in her future pursuits. We didn't have very many um, similarities in personality. I found it interesting that Josh mentioned a fear of missing out. Oh. BOMO. <laughs> I have... What do you think you meant by that? I have serious BOMO about everything. <laughs> I think Josh hit the nail on the head with the uh, FOMO. You know, when I moved to Melbourne at one point and my friends would message me in Canberra saying that they were going out and I was panic stations like, <gasps> They're going out without me. They're going to be having fun. I'm not there. Like, mm. so. You still got that? Yes. <laughs> so is there a chance that that FOMO is driving me to just jump into the relationships? It's that excitement that I first get when I've met that person mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, this, like, I actually really like you. I'm really excited. That drives me to then go, OK, but... Jump in. Yeah. Mm. Once that initial excitement and sparkle has run out on the relationship, then I'm like, well, what are other people doing? The biggest point I took away from Josh's message was when he talked about the honeymoon phase. Could indicate one of two things going on here. You're either jumping into relationships too quickly without discovering if that person is really what you're looking for in a partner, or you're not open to the reality of love. 
which is that after a certain amount of time of you being with someone and all those happy hormones are wearing off, you're not willing to put in the hard work and accept them for their faults. I'm probably not putting as much effort into the relationship as I should be because there's other fun things to do. I think it's time to bring somebody in who most understands you as a person. It was the uncertainty of not knowing who it was going to be. I'm um, Amanda and um, Lyndall's mother. Mandy and Lyndall are friends just as much as they are mother and daughter. So Mandy's seen Lyndall's many relationship breakdowns. I think she needs to reframe what she thinks a relationship is or looks like. Manny says that Lyndall doesn't go after the men she really wants for fear of failure. The problem with this is Lyndall becomes dissatisfied, the relationship becomes unhealthy and it falls over again. She's been struggling with this space for a long time. What I'm hoping is that Lyndall's admiration and respect for her mother will lead her to listen. And that part of her brain that requires triggering will kick her into action and she'll start searching for greater, better and more challenging relationships. My mum is not only my mum, but she's, you know, my best friend. Tell me about your relationship. Uh, me and Lynn look at a great relationship. We always have done since she was little. We're very close. She loves excitement. She loves to get out there and have fun and just and push the limits. But I'm hearing that sometimes that lack of excitement is what's killing her relationships. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So once that the endorphins and that fun and excitement stuff wears off, she's like, nah. I can, yeah, it's not giving me what I want anymore. And then all of a sudden it's like, they do this, they do that. And they just go from she, her being into them and then to them just annoying her and she wants to get rid of them. Do you think they're actually doing anything wrong? No, 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 they're not. To be honest, sometimes you're like, oh, Jesus, you poor bugger, like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's not saying it takes two to tango here, no, is she? No, <laughs> no, no, she doesn't often. <laughs> My mum calls the spade when she sees a spade, so she's um, talked to me a lot about, like, my relationships. She told me about her relationship with Steve. Mm, yeah. What really annoys her about partners is when they will agree with everything she does, says and things like that. Right. So she wants somebody to be able to have independent thinking kind of thing, but I think Steve's scared her from that because that independent thinking I'm um, turned into power and control. Mm. But how do you think she takes if someone actually stands up to her? She just almost has like temper tantrums and stuff A like tantrum. that. Yeah, she becomes just ridiculously stubborn until she gets what she mm. wants. And then when they finally succumb and go, okay, it's not worth it. She's bored. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. She needs somebody that's strong in their personality. She also needs somebody that can kind of stimulate her mentally as well. Mandy, relationships you've had. Mm. Yeah. Would you find, you know, that it is always exciting at the beginning? Always, yeah. Right. yeah. And then? Yeah. And life then, starts, the yeah. work. Yeah, that's right. right, yeah. The teamwork. Yeah, yeah. You see the person's flaws. Yeah. The real it. stuff starts coming out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's when you do the digging in. Yeah. And you do the building. Yeah, yeah. And you build the friendship, the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The commitment. That's, yeah, that's right. Mm, the work. Yeah. You think Lyndall's missing that? Yeah. She can't see that? No, no, she can't see that. That's And she can't find the good in that. Mm. So that sense that somebody's there for you and that you can trust that they've got you back, because you don't necessarily have that in the in the front end. Like, right. it's all fun and excitement, but you know that at any time... Something Holiday else... brochure at the beginning, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah, right. that's right. So that sense of that somebody's got your back and, mm. and that, you know, they're not going to get flighty and mm. take off. So, Mandy, what advice would you give Lyndall? Because your mum has seen these relationships. I think be brave enough to step up to strong people. You're never going to be happy with somebody that's not able to stand up to you and, and you know, laugh at your tantrums because that's really what they need to do. And it's going to be rough sometimes. You're going to fight and you're going to hate each other sometimes, but I think that's where your depth is. And if you, that's where you'll find that ongoing kind of excitement afterwards. 
And I think you need to reframe and, re and realise that that stuff after that four to six months is fun. That's where the satisfaction is going to be. For her to call that out and say, you know, you need to be braver, kind of just cemented that I do actually need to believe in myself more that I'm going to be enough for these other people who are more dominant. She was a little bit more emotionally stirred than I would have expected her to be, actually. I really hope that what she walks away from this today is a sense of being OK within herself and just to give her a little bit of inner peace, really. What I've heard from Josh and Mum is that a relationship's not a tool for keeping you entertained. You have days where you're not at your best. Yeah. So do they. You can't have someone who's going to always just keep you entertained. You know, you're going to end up doing shopping and paying bills and mowing lawns and, 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 and life. And then in between is the fun bits. That's called work. You see, there's no such thing as leisure and fun without work. Otherwise, it becomes boring. Yeah. As Cliff pointed out to me, there is going to be exciting bits, but it's a different, different sort of excitement later on. Lyndall, there is another person I'd like to gain some perspective from today. Person who's had the opportunity to know you both as a friend and a partner. It's someone who will always be in your life. Name's Aaron, 31 years old. Aaron's dated Lyndall on and off a couple of times now, and as a quieter character, it's hard to bring up his true feelings without having his head bitten off. So he simply stopped bringing things up. It takes two to sort of fix the issue. And sometimes it feels like I'd be the only person trying to fix it. Aaron believes that Lyndall bases her decisions on what she wants here and now. We call this instant gratification. We simply can't get what we want. We move on, dump that partner, find a new one, and get that quick satisfaction. Well, I'm just all nerves. I'm just nervous <laughs> about everything today. I'm hoping Lyndall recognises the courage it took Aaron to come here today, and it triggers something in her that is a call for action. Hi, Erin. Hey. How are you going? Good, thanks. I think I may have actually rolled my eyes. Whoops. What I'd like you to tell me is, what's it like being in a relationship with Lyndall? Like a roller coaster. Very easy at the beginning. Fun, honeymoon? Yeah. Then what happens? Sort of get to the top of the roller coaster yeah. and um, then it just starts sort of going down. So the communication slows down a little bit and when you have a bit of an issue, it's sort of like she doesn't really want to communicate about it. Sometimes she won't want to hear what you have to say if you have a problem. What's she like with conflict? <laughs> be honest, she, I think she does, does like conflict, but I think if it's sort of negative towards her, she doesn't like to hear it. What does she do? Shuts herself out, like, puts up a wall. Does she snap back? Yes. Uh -huh. Have a tantrum? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, mate, I chuck tantrums all the time. Like, you can say it. It's OK. Can you tell me about some patterns you've noticed in Lindell's relationship behaviours? We've gotten together and broken up a couple of times. Mm -hmm. The time frame is never very long. How long? Around five months. OK. Why do you think that is? She gets bored. Are you changing at five months? Are you hitting five months going up? Not me, no. No, I'd love it to be a lot more than five months. OK. Because what do we start after five months? Learning more about each other? Yeah. I don't think. You really get to know a person a lot within five months. Five months does go pretty quickly. I could see the concentration in her eyes. Yeah, I definitely could tell she was listening to what was being said. What do you think Lyndall needs to work on to have more successful relationships? And you need to be able to communicate and talk things through. But just stop and listen. 
and hear what the other person has to say, understand the way they're feeling. Life's not about instant gratification. Have a bit of patience and empathy. I most definitely agree. Empathy uh, is something that I do struggle with. Like I said, Aaron's an awesome guy. He's great, but I don't think that he's the right sort of person for me. Because as we know, you need to work on some things. Most definitely. And I think, you know, Aaron mentioned empathy. You can't just keep hopping into a relationship with someone if they're not the right person for you. Yeah, most definitely. Because you know how it's going to end. When it starts, you know what's going on here, and they don't. Yeah. And it hurts them. It's not fair. You have to communicate with them and tell them what their bit is to make you happy. Yeah, definitely. As well as knowing what you're going to do. What's your bit? Yeah. She needs time to figure out what she wants and how to do it. Yeah. Well, she wants to work on herself. And it will take a bit of work, and it will take time, but I think she can. Aaron is a definite representation of what Cliff was saying with partner selection. So that really hit. Everyone that's spoken to us today has described you as confident, a great person, outgoing. We need to redefine what a relationship is in your life. That honeymoon phase is going to end. <laughs> Are you willing to put in those hard yards? Yes. Stop basing your decisions on how you feel in the now and make them based on the long-term goal. So I think I'm on the way, but I just need a lot more practice. So moving forward, I want you to try some new things for me. OK. I want you to redefine what a relationship is to you. Stop thinking about what they can bring to me and start thinking about what I could bring. Yeah. I want you to read a long, big, physical book and read a chapter a day. <laughs> that's, that's a Pace problem. Pace yourself. That's a problem for me. I read a book in a day. I want you to pace this, and the reason is it's going to help you pace life. OK. Long-term commitment. Yeah. That's going to be hard work for you. It's going to be It's going to be definite hard work. I didn't come here to give you easy work. <laughs> you didn't come here for easy stuff. Yeah. You came here for work. Yeah. I want you to do that. I really like the idea because I think it's going to be super challenging because I love to just get in and get it done. Most importantly, I want you to be brave enough to seek the style of man you want. You've made some clear statements around what you're looking for in a partner, but you don't seem to be ending up with them. No. You need to be bold in your partner selection. Brave, brave enough to go after them. I like the idea of you being with nice guys. But I want you to go for the ones that are strong enough to stand up to you. Yeah. They're not mean to you. They don't criticise you. They'll challenge you. Someone's got to change. Yeah, that's me. Who's it going to be? Me. Definitely the biggest thing um, today is don't be with someone, don't select someone because they're a nice person because in the end, you're just going to hurt them and you know that they're not the right person for you. Relationships are the ultimate vehicle for self-growth. But you've got to be vulnerable. You've got to be prepared to put in the work. Lyndall wants a challenging relationship. She wants a satisfying one. But she's taking the easy way. And if she keeps doing this, she's going to end up in an endless cycle of dissatisfaction and upset. I know Lyndall will struggle with the tasks I've given her today, but I also believe she's going to give it a fair go. It can be hard in a fast-paced, immediate world to understand the importance of long-term applied slog. But if Lyndall can do this, the benefits will far outweigh the costs. 